Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today, let's get those wings finished and then we're going to talk about this little piece of aluminum. All right, before we get back to the wings, um, I want to thank all the new subscribers. Uh, just in the past couple days, uh, I picked up another 50 plus subscribers and it got me up to that 400 level. So I very much appreciate it. So let's get started. All right, I just spent a very agonizing hour plus getting that, the top wing and the bottom wing and everything else balanced out and properly aligned. I may have to try to do something with the cabane struts. I, I haven't got to that point yet. We're gonna keep working on it. It's either that or make some end struts for the wings, for the interplane struts. And I, I may just end up doing this, either come down from there to there. I don't really want to, but I may end up doing it just to get it a little more stable on the inside. All right, what I first thing is I had to do, I had to get measurements and I ended up using this spot right down here. Pretty much the one, two, three, fourth. It's the end of the fourth open bay. So what I did is I came in and right from here, I measured back to here to make sure that the bottom wing was 90 degrees to the fuselage. And then what I ended up having to do before I even started getting the top wing so that it was situated properly at this type of angle, at the X axis, twist, whatever you want to call it, um, I had to make sure that I got the height correct. So the first thing I did is I got everything dialed in and if I can put this in the right way, this one comes in and it's sitting at 11 and 7 eighths. And then I did the same exact thing on this side and got this side and I was using the bottom, the little mount for the, uh, the bracket for the interplane strut up to here. Sorry about that. And this is 11 and 7 eighths as well. So that made sure that this wing and this wing were parallel to each other. And then what I did is I made sure that the wings were level measured from pretty much the, the tabletop to here. And this was 15 on this side and then it was 15 on that side. So I knew everything was true with the height, the relationship between this wing and this wing down here. Then it took me just a little bit to get this properly rotated back so that from this point to here and the same point to here was 40 and one half inches and they're both dead on so we know that this wing here is now true to the bottom wing not only in height but also in the amount of angle whatever however you want to do it that stuff so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come on in and make measurements from the bottom up to the top for the rear and i'm going to do it for the front so from there, then I'm going to go ahead and then get these little things and get everything drawn out and start drilling some holes. The fun never ends. Never ends. All right, I'm going to show you guys how I'm making the marks uh, for, the, for where the holes are going to be drilled in the interplane struts. I've got three of them already done, and uh, I think it's going to work out very well. The accuracy is going to be very close to where it needs to be. When I'm saying very close, I'm saying very close. Exact, the way it's set up, I don't have the tools to make it exact. We're just going to get it really close. So this is how I went ahead and did it. I come in on the bottom, squeeze into the cardboard just so that it gives me a little imprint of where the end of the screw comes through. And then I'm going to come up to the top, kind of pull it as tight as I can and then press again. So what I'm doing is, you can see the dent right here. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and make a mark where the dent goes in. And I'll do the other side as well. And that is how I'm gonna get it set up and drill the holes. So it's gonna get us really close, really close. All right, now the way I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these over I'm just going to take my little my little templates and I'm just going to cut it really close to the center of that. 
because I've already scribed lines. I don't know if you can be able to see it that it's showing me the halfway distance across. Scribed it in because I want these little dots to line up with that line. So let's go ahead and get this one cut as well. And since this one is for the right rear, right, and because this one's for the right rear, we're gonna go ahead and grab the one that's the right rear one, put it down here on the bench. And let's get everything lined up the best we can and let's get these things stamped. And this is why I made things a little bit bigger than they need to be. So it just makes it easier for me to get everything properly stamped and then we'll just take it from there. So this one's gonna go right here. And then the other side, let's get it pulled tight, lined up. Let's do the same thing, get it in the center. And we've got our little spots pegged for this side. So that's the little dots up on the top that are gonna get drilled out and then I will shape the ends of these things after I get those drilled. There now, I got the holes drilled and you can see where I'm gonna to have to go ahead and grind this off. I can probably come in with, uh, and I probably will, come in and just nibble away a little bit with the, uh, with the bandsaw and then just finish the rest up on the, uh, the sander. Um, so like I said, we're going from this to this. So we're coming up on eight o'clock PM right now. It's time to head upstairs. So uh, we'll be back down first thing in the morning and we'll start grinding. All right, the interplane struts, they are done. They're installed. Everything's looking good. I am going to turn them into an end strut. Two weeks later. All right, before I show you the finalization that I did to the interplane struts, uh, I turned it into an end strut. And it was all done. Unfortunately, I ended up doing it all outside the other day uh, because we had so much rain, the floor in the shop got flooded and I had to throw a bunch of stuff away. And right now my mat and everything is all sitting outside because it's not dry yet. So I decided to just open up the whole shop, get everything off the floor and just kind of let it dry out as much as it could. But because it's so humid outside and so cold on the concrete floor, it just keeps sweating, so I'm very slowly bringing it back up to temperature again to see if I can get it all to uh, stop seeping up through the floor. So anyway, what I ended up having to do on it was, you all saw how I um, made the little templates um, so that way I can make the inner plane struts. What I ended up doing was everything worked out perfectly with the inner planes is because I ended up... Bugs. Um, the reason why everything worked out nicely now is because I ended up making the front. Sorry about that. The other camera's talking to me. All right. In uh, one of the earlier videos, I went and showed you how I made the little cardboard templates. Um, and just to get the measurements of what I was going to need once I got the interplane struts, Got the wings set with these, which had the adjustment in it, the elongated hole in it. Um, and I wanted to get rid of that. So once I got the templates made, you looked at the template and the front template was identical. So even though they're marked, um, they're both the same exact length between holes. And when I did the rear, um, one side worked good and the other side was a little bit off. It was off by not too much, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, um, but it was loose. So I ended up just go ahead and making another interplane strut. And this was the one that was loose. It was just, it was a little bit too long. So I made, and it was the right rear. So I made another one, the same exact size as the left rear and the wing mashed up perfect. So, um, you know, luck, possible um but at least you realize that the 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 arc the almost ready to cover kit was pretty good and you know it was it was it was made back i think this was made in thailand or, or vietnam so it was made back in the day when the arcs were actually much higher quality than they are right now so what i ended up having to do uh, with the interplane struts is because i didn't need to make them as wide as this so i ended up 
taking what I cut off of the side of this full size and it was going to work out real nice. So what I did with this, and it took me a while, I put this inside my little vise and, uh, and grabbed my flat file, an old school flat file from probably, it's probably older than I am. And uh, I spent many an hour getting rid of that, the marks from cutting it through the bandsaw. Um, but they came out really nice. So, uh, I ended up measuring with my uh, digital caliper uh, as I was going along to make sure I was within a couple thousand. So it wasn't going to have a big taper. There wasn't going to be an issue with it. <clears throat> and so with the templates, I did the same thing. I made two templates. I did uh, the right wing first. I went ahead and cut that out and curved the ends and got it ready to go. And I put it on this side. But because I had the permanent interplane struts already mounted to the other side, the only difference was going to be how it how it was how it was parallel, you know, whether it was a little bit or, or not. But because I've got the cabane struts, everything was pretty solid on the other end. So I took the one I made for the right hand side and it fit perfect on the left hand side. So I just went ahead and made a copy, just drilled right, clamped it down, drilled right through the holes that were already in um, the right hand side and made one for the left. So it was a lot easier to make that diagonal on the end struts uh, than I thought it was going to be. But um, it came out rock solid. So let me go ahead and get the other camera and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Let there be light. All right, and now that we got a little bit better light over here, let me show you what it looks like. Okay, here was the remade interplane struts and here's the diagonal. So that's how we're getting our end. And in most cases, real life, it's all one piece. This is gonna be a bolt together. Um, no big deal. I had to use a little bit longer uh, 440 bolt on this side because we're attaching two of them. So, but it's going to work out real nice. Now, these little brass screws are not the ones that I am using. These were just temporary, just to hold everything in place. These are number twos. I'm going to be putting number fours in and they're going to be stainless steel. They're going to be just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that these holes are drilled enough for the, for the, uh, the number fours because I want something with a little more strength uh, than because right now those, those number twos aren't biting that hard into the, uh, excuse me, into the, sorry about that. Uh, these little number twos aren't biting too hard into the hardwood underneath. It feels like it's pine, um, but it's not biting in as hard as I'd like it to, so. All right, so as you can see, I mean, if you move the top, it moves the whole plane. So now, because you've got the two triangles, there you go, there's the strength. So this does not wiggle back and forth at all from side to side. If you can see, when I move the wing, it moves the whole plane. So I am really happy with, with the way this is, is set up. Now, the little bit of side to side play, from end to end, it moves maybe... I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch. So even though I don't have any structure between the uh, cabane struts, it really doesn't seem like it wants to go anywhere. So I'm just going to kind of leave this just the way that this is. Um, and the wings themselves are ready for the final sand. So I got to start working on that real soon. And then I think I may, because in real life they had a, a, a fuel tank up on top, the the it was smaller because it, it was a trainer it was a smaller fuel tank than they had on the tiger moss so it might only stand up about yay high so it might only come up about three eighths of an inch on the top of the wing i just haven't decided if i want to do that um and if you notice you can see it the wings are epoxy together um so that also adds to uh, stiffness and strength in the wings too so like i said the wings are done they just need a final sand on them now when i was talking about the water as you can see the woods just a little bit darker here what i did was these things were sitting on the floor but they weren't sitting directly on the concrete they were stood up off the floor by a piece of a cardboard box yeah stupid on my part um, because of course the water when it came in it lifted right up to the cardboard box got into the wingtips just on this side so nothing is bad there's nothing wrong with the wings the the glue that I use in here it is the water. It's the waterproof glue. 
the stuff designed to get wet and not break down. So if I really, if I was really concerned after I get the final sanding done, if I wanted to get rid of this, I could just go ahead and bleach the color out. I'll probably just leave it the way it is because this is going to get covered and then it's going to be primed whether I do aluminum paste in the, um, in the dope on the final coat, or if I just want to come in with some, uh, just regular uh, primer, automotive primer, and shoot it down before I put the color on it. So I haven't decided which way I want to go. Um, I'll figure that when the time comes. So anyway, yeah, she's sitting pretty good. Now let's go sit over there on that stool and let me show you what you're going to look at next. All right, lastly, there it is. That's where it sits. That's going to be the control horn for the back because not thinking and not paying attention to the way they had to put these on the real stomp that's kind of what they had to do this was the first prototype that i cut out just just to see how that was going to fit and i just took some the typical tape and super glue super glued it to the side between two layers of tape um, just to see how well this was going to work now the only problem i've got with the way it sits right now is that I'd like it to go a little bit farther than this before it hits. So what I'm going to try to do, see how well I can make it work with this. I may have to get a, a little bit wider piece of aluminum, but I'd like this to come out the way it is. And instead of rotating down, I want to cut it so that it kind of goes sideways. So the whole reason behind this and the way with the testing is I want to make sure that there's not going to be interference from the elevator because with one coming straight off the side it, it's it's interferes right away i mean you can't go down with it you can go up but you can't go down it was going to hit it um so i just got to figure out how much more i want to tweak this it's close and it would work i would just like to get more throw because i'm going to put a cone on the top on the outside of this and then there's going to be a ball so that way I'm not worried. I'm going to be able to get full motion out of it with just the way this is right now. So I've just got to make the decision on how far I want to go with that. But I just, I'll probably readdress this one before I go any farther with the tail. But uh, yeah, so we're pretty far along. It's all the little stuff that takes forever. The big stuff only takes a little bit of time. It's the stuff where you start fussing back and forth on how you want it to work, how you want it to look. That's where all the time gets eaten up. So, so anyway, She's sitting pretty good, and I am pretty happy with those struts. They came out a lot better than I thought they would. So, yeah, I'm very pleased on that one. So, anyway, so anyway, we can call this yet another video. Um, and we're getting really close to covering. I'm hoping within the next week or two, um, we will be covering. Unfortunately, right now at work, I'm pulling long hours and many days a week. Um, so it's my time available down here is almost nothing right now. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how well I can do things. Um, this is Tuesday, the 26th of May. My next day off is Tuesday of next week. And today was not a day off. I had to work. So it's, uh, yeah, you know how it's going. So anyway, um, see you guys next time I'm down in the shop.